I'm George Pearson and this is a Photoshop Elements project. I'm doing this one in Photoshop Elements 15 but you can do the exact same project in earlier versions of Photoshop Elements as well. If you enjoy this project make sure that you subscribe and click on the like button and also to learn more about Photoshop Elements take a look at the links for my full training which you'll find in the description on Amazon or on my website. This graffiti street art painting is created using the wall background over here and also this portrait photo. Fairly straightforward to do this. There's a lot of steps to get to this position. There's nothing difficult though, nothing really hard in this one, just a lot of steps to go through to achieve this particular look. Okay, let's just start off with a new file. I'll close this one down. And we'll start off here with this one that says redbricks.jpg. This is our background file and we'll be using this as the base file and then combining this image into this file. First I'll go ahead and save this as something else. Let's do a file save as. I'll save it as a Photoshop file and I'll just call it graffiti. There we go. Okay, I'll just go dock this right there. Now if you don't have floating or docking windows like that, just go up to the edit menu, come down to preferences and general, and make sure these two check boxes are checked. Allow floating documents in expert mode and also enable floating document window docking. Okay, so I have the wall back there is docked and I have the portrait floating in here above. I'll now just grab the background, drag it over here onto the wall image and there we go, there's the portrait. Now it actually is at the right size now and if you just take it so that the top clicks to the top like that and the left and right clicks in, that's the right size. I actually built this thing so it fits exactly, making this real easy to start off. Now we want to make a mask around the girl here. I'll use the polygonal lasso tool, we'll go around and then we'll come back and we'll do a little bit of stuff, I'll do some fancier stuff over here and just do some refined edge work on this bit of hair, make it look a little bit nicer. Okay, we'll start off, I'll zoom in. There we go, so you can see what we're doing. And grab the polygonal lasso tool to start this off and feathering at one pixel. Now we'll just make this a nice little selection. Now this doesn't have to be really super clean because we're doing that kind of wall art effect if it's a little bit rough, it, it's not going to matter. It may even actually add a little bit to the effect. Who knows, we'll just have to see. Now if you go up here to the edge like this, just hold the space bar down. And you can then move the picture. Let go of the space bar and you're back on the tool again. So I'll just follow around the back of the head here. Again, this doesn't need to be perfectly clean this time. I'm going to skip that bit of hair sticking up there and we'll stay with the main direction here of the hair. And I'll take it clear around. The only place I'm going to be really careful on this one is going to be down where we have that bit of hair feathering out. I'm going to get rid of that piece there and here I'm going to come out about like this and then we'll clean that up with your fine edge tool. Now be a little more careful along the edge of the face here so we get a real nice clean selection. When you're using this tool just take your time and you're putting in dots and then the program is connecting those dots with the lines. And just kind of work our way down. You can also, if you just scroll just off like that a little bit, it will scroll the window automatically for you. Okay, and then just go back to the beginning. There you go. Notice as I move it right up against that edge, you get a little circle pops up next to the tool. At that point, it will then close that selection out. Now I want to just refine the edge right here in Later versions of Elements, that's the button right down here. In earlier versions, that's Select and Refine Edge right there. Either one brings the same tool up. There we go. And using the 
your fine edge radius tool. I'll just come in here and just kind of paint along the edge and we'll let Photoshop Elements work that in. And this usually works best if you kind of work it in a little bit at a time. And we'll just take around, we'll take a little look here. There's a little bit right there, I might need just a touch, maybe a touch right there. If it goes too far, just switch down to the tool right down below here. And then just paint over the part where it went too far, and it will then fill that section back in for you. Just like that. Okay, when you're done, we want this just going to a selection. Choose OK. There's our selection. And then hit the layer mask button right there. Add layer mask button. And it gives you a layer mask for the portrait. Okay, let's just fit this on our screen. There we go. So there's our girl on the background. So far, so good. Now we need to give the girl that painted look, and we'll also need to adjust the background to make it look more interesting. So it's just a few steps. One is do the girl. Second one is to work on the background. Third one is to put in that kind of painted outline. And fourth one is to add in all those decorations. There's four basic steps involved here. Double click on the image side of the layers so that you're on the image side. Look for that light blue outline. And then go up to Filter and Filter Gallery. And open up the artistic filters up here. And you want the dry brush, which is that one. It's really kind of a nice, interesting, painty effect in here on the dry brush. Now we're going to be pushing our settings just a little bit. The ones that you want will be 10 and then 5 on your brush detail and 3 on your texture, which is clear up to the top end up here. And that gives you that just kind of a painted effect in here and choose OK. So there's our painted effect. Now we need to blend this into the wall in the background. So let's use a blend mode and you want to use darken. It just kind of darkens it in. Now this is just the beginning. We have a lot to do on this one to get it look, looking really, really nice. Let's put an adjustment layer on the top of this whole thing here. Layer, adjustment layer, and levels. And don't check this checkbox. We'll be using this for the whole image in here. Choose OK. This is just a basic adjustment to get everything kind of in the right range for us. So in this one, we want to bring our blacks up, bring the darks up. And the setting I'm using is 48, just like that. And we want to bring back in some lightness on that, lighting the whole picture up. So our darks are darker, but we're lighting the whole picture up. And the number I'm using here is 1.28, just like that. And we'll bring the lights up as well for a bit more contrast in here. And the light number is 218. Then just close that out. That helps get some of our contrast into the whole picture. And that will be sitting at the top of this stack. It will be a big long stack of layers. And this will always be at the top of the stack. OK, now back down to the photograph. Duplicate this layer, just like that. So have a duplicate of the layer. And we'll use this to bring back some more interest in here. And we'll set this for a blend mode of screen. There we go. Lightens the picture up, but nothing else, as you can see in there, just kind of lightens the picture up. And the reason it's not in the background, of course, is because this is controlled by this layer mask over here. Now I need to adjust that value. It's far too bright. So let's do an adjustment layer here. It's also you know, way too yellow. There are lots and lots of yellow in here. I want to kill that yellow. So layer, uh, adjustment layer, and hue saturation. This time check that checkbox. Use previous layer to create clipping mask. This will link this adjustment to just that one layer. Now I want to get rid of the yellow. So change this over to yellows. And then on the hue, saturation and lightness, we're only working with the saturation in here. And we're going to be bringing this back down to a negative 84. Just type that in. Negative 84, there we go. And that brings down 
the yellows in the picture as you can see in there so that helps a lot brings our yellows down and gives it back that kind of naturalistic effect now I want to put some coloration into the hair just the hair nothing else we'll do that with another layer just take this top layer here drag it up and pull it above that adjustment layer we'll need to reset the adjustment layer so click on that right click and create clipping mask that links that back to that one layer again right there now on this layer up here we don't need the screen any longer so set this back to normal there we go but we just want to have just the hair and nothing else so I want to make or extend our layer mask over here so we're just looking at just the hair part of this so let's zoom in a little bit there we are and I use the polygonal lasso tool again and I'll start right down here at the tip of the hair and let's double click on the layer mask side and I'll just make a nice little little mask right along the edge of the hair here again doesn't need to be perfect because we are going to be working with just the hair and if it's a little bit you know kind of a, a brush effect or a little rough that actually will add to the quality in here let's get some of these because it's almost a, a cartoonish effect which is what we're really looking for on this one and it's getting some of these spiky effects here at the hair streaking out and just work around and make this new selection once this is done we'll then use this selection to modify that existing layer mask and just take it up and around I'm not going to worry about that bit of hair down on the back of the neck. I'm just worrying about the part of the top up here. Notice to move this one, I'm just pushing it up against the rulers, and then the image just scrolls automatically for you when you do that. And we'll work around the edge again. And come down back to our starting point and do a little bit of zigzaggy stuff in here to catch some of this hair okay now this part is selected but I want to change the selection so I'll go up here to select and inverse now the outside is selected that's the area out there so now we can go to our foreground background colors make sure that is black in the foreground grab the paintbrush and I'll set this at a pretty good size about like that you can kind of see it right there now I want to paint black into the face out here it's already black that's that stuff out there you need to paint in here black into here to hide the face and just show just that hair so I'll just paint that and you can see it pretty easily here There we go. And then scroll down a little bit. And we'll just continue this clear around. Notice on the, the neck there, you don't really see that because it's already very, very black. And finish that off. Okay, so now I have a layer mask just for the hair right there. And you can then deselect. There we go. Now that we have this, we can apply some coloration that will come into the light areas of the hair, but not the dark areas of the hair. And we'll do that with an adjustment layer gradient map. So I'll go back here to the move tool and layer, adjustment layer, gradient map right there. And let's link this to that layer. And click on the spectrum there, brings up your spectrums. Change this to color harmonies one. You want the one right there at the beginning, it's called spectrum. And choose OK. Now that's kind of strange right now. So we need to come down to this layer and then blend this in with the rest of these layers. And that's up here on our blend mode. Come down to overlay 
and that blends it in. So that what we get are these colors in here, color highlights in the hair, and the rest of the hair is dark. Gives that kind of nice painted effect. Get a little bit of highlighting on the outside edge. That's perfectly fine. That just adds to this artistic effect. Okay, so far so good. We now have all of this taken care of. Now we need to do an outline around the head in here. And we'll do that by coming down to the bottom portrait layer here. Let's make a new layer and just drag it down. There we are. So a new layer underneath the portraits. And on this layer, it's fill us with white. So change the colors to white foreground to white. Just hit that little double arrow there. Paint bucket and click fills that with white. Now that we have that, we can take the layer mask over here. Click on the layer mask, hold the Alt key down, and drag it down to that layer. It gives a new layer mask, and we're just seeing the portrait here. The white's kind of in behind the portrait. Now that we have this, we can apply a stroke style onto this thing and get a stroke that will actually follow that portrait layer mask around. Make sure you're on this layer. There we go. Go up to Layer, Layer Style, Style Settings and stroke right here. Make sure that is, is working at outside. It'll be a little strange down here. And this will be different each time you do this. You can come back and you can erase this a little bit once we get the basic stroke in place. And you want a stroke size up here. Pretty good size, 24 pixels. Just a big solid stroke like that. This will look good when we're finished. Don't worry about how it looks right now. We're just moving ahead on this thing. Choose OK. Now on this right click and simplify the layer and it collapses the whole thing down just like that. Now we can get rid of this white in the middle. Grab the magic wand and click where the face is. That selects that intersection. Then just hit the delete key and it gets rid of the white. So we have just this outline. At this point now we can come in and we can clean up this edge in here with an eraser tool. Just erase into that. So here's our eraser tool. And I'll bring the size down quite a bit. Maybe about 50 or so. 48. Looks okay. I think I'll go ahead and just type in 50. Now it's on a soft edge. I already want to have this as a hard edge. So I'll scroll down here and let's find a hard edge. Okay, hard edge 19, and I'll put back in 50 again. So hard edge eraser, we're on that layer. I'm just going to come in here and let's just deselect also. There we go, deselect. Grab your polygonal lasso tool, and then let's just make a lasso in here on the shape that you want for this and then close it out here and then erase inside. So you can be real precise on this if you want to. It just takes making that selection and then erasing that out. There we go and deselect. Okay that takes care of that little bit. Now that is all handled. Let's now put some interest onto this black outline that we have here. Let's go up to the filter come down to noise, add noise, and I have this set at 65 percent and uniform right there. It just puts this speckle pattern into it. There you go. Choose OK. Now go up to the filter and filter gallery and apply the watercolor filter onto that. That's We're still in the artistic section. Apply the watercolor filter choose OK and there we go. So we've added in some stuff into that border outline. All right, we're getting someplace. We're getting closer. Let's now do a bit of work on that wall in the background. I'll set this to fit on screen again. Come down to the background down here and we're going to make a copy of this background. So drag it up here to the new layer button. There's our copy. So we now have two things. Notice what happened in here is 
when we did all this stuff, the background became very, very light. We kind of lost some contrast. It looks fine where the face is, but we lost our contrast outside here. So we'll fix that at this point. So here's our new layer. Click on one of these layer masks, hold the Alt key down, drag it down to the background like that. So this is now applied to the brick, but it's the wrong direction. So we're going to invert the layer mask. Click on the layer mask, look for that light blue outline. If you don't see it, double click on that. Go up to Filter, come down to Adjustments and Invert. It just reverses that. So now the wall outside of the head is shown and what's inside the head is not shown. Now we can adjust the values of the wall and we're going to actually darken down what's out here but not touch what's inside. Again, we'll go to Adjustment Layer. So Layer, New Adjustment Layer. This time we'll be using the Levels Control and link this with that layer. Choose OK. There we are. Now in here, we want to bring our, our darks up. So bring that side up. This is going to be at 23. We want to adjust the light values so it's lighter. And we'll be putting this one at 62. And we'll leave the white where it is, just like that. So we've darkened down the wall without touching the values in the face. Now the wall and the face look more matching. They are in the right value range in here, so there's more of a continuity between the wall and the face. Okay, so far so good. But also notice that we lost our lines in here on the wall. They're kind of hidden in behind this face. We need to put our lines back onto the face. To do that, we need another copy of the background. So drag it up here to another copy. And take that copy and drag it up to the top of the page just below our top adjustment layer right there. And we're going to now work on this layer. First thing you want to do is to go up to Enhance and Convert to Black and White. I have it set at Scenic Landscape. And I left those settings alone. But you can try different things if you want to, but for me the scenic landscape worked out fine. I probably should have used urban snapshots just because, but we'll use scenic landscape. Choose OK. Now it's brighter here than it is here because that adjustment layer. Now we have this. We need to add some texture onto this thing. So we'll go up to the filter menu and come down to filter gallery. Let's close down the artistic and come down to the bottom one, texturizer right here. Texture and then texturizer. So texture and then texturizer. And in here, we want the sandstone setting. I have the scaling set at 100 and the relief set at 9. It just adds a bit of a texture in there. I can show you what that is. There's without and there's with. Just a little bit of additional texture on that. Choose OK. Now we need to make this high contrast and for that we'll go up here to the filter and adjustments and threshold and in here this gives you a straight black and white effect just like that so set the number here to 99 so you're seeing mostly the lines and then a bit of texture along with the lines and then we'll adjust the opacity on this thing down to 44 percent or just type in 44 and then change the blend mode in here to multiply there we go so there's without and there's with and as you can see it mostly is affecting just the face it's giving us a little more texture on some of the bricks but it's mostly right here in the face giving us those lines back that we want so that gives that look of being painted right onto the wall. Okay, at this point now we have finished the portrait. The portrait is done. Now we need to put in our decorations onto this. And we're we'll doing those in a bunch of steps. There's a bunch of decorations to add onto this thing. We're we'll doing two sets of these. First is the background, and then we'll be doing some foreground stuff. And since this is all the background is going to be in behind the portrait. Let's come down here. We have this layer right here. This is the adjustment layer for the brick wall. 
put a new layer right above that and that's where we'll start working with these shapes. So come down to graphics. When you get to this section, the graphics, make sure you're in these shapes right there. And in here, here's some flowers. We'll be using this in just a little bit. Let's roll up and we'll get to some of these other shapes up here. And the one you want is that one right down there. Now don't do anything yet. This is crop shape 33. Notice that these all have numbers. There's 31, that one's 28 for instance. We'll be using this, but before we do that, let's change our foreground background colors so that black is your foreground color. And to see this easily, let's go over here to our layers and I'm going to hide a lot of our layers. Let's first hide that background, even just the basic background layer. And then go to the top and let's just work on down here and hide all of this stuff just like that so just that background the very bottom background is showing okay now let's bring in our graphic styles here it is now depending upon your version of elements you'll either drag this in or double click on it or single click on it i'll just drag it in and put it about to the center of the page right there okay now let's rotate this you can actually rotate that around and down here in the tool options you'll see we have a number set this at negative 54 on the rotation and then let's grab this and make this a lot bigger I should come off the page a bit on the top and bottom just like that so we're out pretty large now this will give us just some stuff showing around outside of our portrait and I have this at 363 you know somewhere around the 350 somewhere around there is pretty good okay here's this, just this big black shape in the middle of the page all right, back to our layers. I'll bring one of the portraits up. You can see there, it just has some stuff showing off around the outside. Let me hide that again. I'm going to push it to the left just a little bit and bring it back up again. That's pretty good. So you want to have just some stuff just kind of like that. Now, this is in behind that portrait. So this will all work out once we have everything showing again. This will be just fine. Okay, I'll hide that portrait again. Now I want to put some color onto this thing and we'll do that by putting a gradient layer above this layer. So I'll go up to layer and fill layer and gradient right there. Check the checkbox to create a clipping mask. Choose OK. There's our gradients. Click in the gradient right here and they want to have the default yellow, violet, orange, blue on our gradients up here and it's actually on the default setting there we go that's the one you want so it's default and that one is the yellow violet orange blue gradient choose OK and you get these colors right into the gradient like that it just got actually puts those colors right into that shape now let's change the angle here a little bit 65 that just kind of rotates that around just a touch and choose OK so so far so good and this one that will then be right behind that image I also want to make sure that we're not going over the image at all on this one so I'll come down to the wall down here let's bring this wall back up again bring that up at this point there we are Come down to this layer mask, hold the Alt key down and drag that up to shape one. So it hides that, so you're just seeing just a little bit of that poking around the outside, adding some color around the outside of our portrait. Okay, that's the first of our graphics. We'll be doing a whole bunch of graphics. Now this one is right below your portrait, so this one stays where it is. Everything else will be coming down below that and above the bricks. So come down to this layer here below that splotch make a new layer right there and we'll add in our second graphic we'll actually be doing two of these go here to graphics again and this time you want to have this shape number 31 right there let's just bring that on there it is now pull that over here let's rotate this around it's kind of like that 124 25 somewhere in there and let's stretch this up 
and just get a big paint splot happening over here, bottom right hand corner. Choose OK. Let's put some coloration on this one back to our layers. There we go. Same thing again, we're going to be doing another gradient map on this one. So layer, fill layer, gradient. Make sure you have that clipping checked. Choose OK. Back to our gradients. Now in this time we're going to be doing what's called the transparent rainbow and that's right down there. It's a rainbow with transparencies on the two ends. Choose OK on that one. Now this we want to have this blending into the wall a bit better. Let's set our degree at 48. Just kind of rotates that around a little bit. Notice if you grab this wheel here you can actually pull the rotation around until you find some colors that you like. I'm going to put over here I think this time 68. Just playing around with it a bit more. So actually rotate that around to get different colorations. If I pull it around it'll just keep on changing the colors in here. It's a real fast, fun, easy way to play with your colors. I think that's kind of fun. Maybe 70 on this one. So that's pretty good. Now I want to have this blending into the background a little bit. So let's bring our opacity down on this layer down to 45. Actually I'm on the wrong layer. Let's come down to the shape layer. There we go. That's where I want to be. Shape layer and change the shape layer to 45. We can now see through that as if it's an old paint splot on there. Plus I want to use this same layer mask again. So Alt key and drag it down into the shape too. There we go. So now that layer mask is blocking that off from anything else. So that's this splot. Put another one up here, upper left hand corner. Same thing. Come down to this layer, splot here, new layer. And if it does this to you, just drag it above that gradient and then let's right click and release clipping mask so it's not indented. That's what you want. Back to our graphics. We're still there, so double click on that. Here we go. I'm going to spin this around a bit more. And let's bring it up here. And we'll use this to add in some just some splotches up here, upper left hand corner, like that. Angle of 111 and about 169 on the size. That should work out pretty well. We'll be hiding this one and just using those up there. And then the same settings as before on this one. So again, we'll be doing a new layer, a fill layer, gradient. Make sure you check that checkbox. Choose OK. Back to our gradients. Back to the transparent rainbow. Choose OK. There's the rainbow effect. Let's now just spin this around and get some nice colors up there. Let's try 48 degrees again here. Maybe a bit more yellows, I think. That's kind of nice. 26 and a half, approximately 26.5 should be nice. Just some bright color up there. And again, same thing. Come down to the shape layer. Change the opacity on the shape layer to 45 degrees. So they're just kind of blending into the wall. And then grab this layer mask. Hold the Alt key down, pull that down, adds that layer mask. Okay, so far so good. We're getting some stuff in here. We can now begin adding in some fancier stuff. This takes care of our just kind of what I call the paint dirt on the wall. We're now going to add in some more specific shapes on this. Same thing again. We'll come right down. Now this time, you know, these are our background colorations. I want this one staying just behind the porch. Let's leave that where it is. Come down to the top of these splatters and then go to the gradient for that splatter line right there. Add a new layer just above that one. Back to our graphics and right here there's this thing that has it's called Crop shape 35, it just has some stars on it. This kind of times just some big star shapes, star thingies in here. Let's take this and we'll rotate this one. So click on the corner and change the rotation on this one to 
115 degrees. Just kind of spins it around like that. Let's come down here where it says W and type in 310. That's 310% on that. Gets these big star things. Then I'll pull those down so I just have some stars showing in the background down there. We're going to be hiding most of this. I just want to have just a little bit of stars showing down here in the background. And choose OK. There we go. Let's put a bevel on this one. Be something just a little bit fancier on this one. We'll add a bevel effect onto this. And that's layer adjustment layer. Actually, no, layer style. There we go. Style settings. Getting ahead of myself there. Style settings and bevel. And on the bevel, it should be up. And set the size at 48. Choose OK. You kind of just this light effect on the edge of those. Come back to our layer mask here. Alt key, drag it down. So we just see just a, little, a few stars poking out in the background right down there. You pull it down just a little bit so it sees more of the actual star shapes. There we go. That looks pretty good. Just want to see some of those stars. And now we'll add that coloration onto this thing. So I'll go up to layer, fill layer, gradient. Same thing. Check that checkbox. Choose OK. Click on the gradient. There we go. Let's go back to our transparent rainbow once again. Choose OK. And there's that rainbow. And you can choose any color you want in here. Just kind of spin this thing around until we get different colors. I think pushing it over towards the greens might be kind of nice down here. Greens and blues, just for some variation. We have you know, yellow and oranges up here. Now some, some greens and blues down there. That looks pretty good. I just grabbed 118 on this one. Choose OK. So there's some stars in the background, some just definite shapes. Let's now about our star bursts over here, upper right hand corner. Same trick once again. Go up to the new layer button, put a new layer. Make sure you're above that gradient. If it comes down below it, just drag it up and right click to remove the clipping mask on that one layer. So there we go. We'll now do two of our starbursts. We'll do just one starburst and then we'll copy that starburst. So back to our graphics. Here we go. And let's find our starburst shape. Actually, I think it's below and not up, but I'll scroll up anyway. Yeah, it's down instead of up, so we'll scroll down and find our starburst effect. And we'll use that. Same basic concept. Again, we're just going to be resizing it and positioning it and then adding in some color into it to give us that effect that we want. And scrolling down, we should be coming close to it pretty soon here. There we go. That's the one you want right there. It's called Ornament 7. Let's bring that up. There it is, Ornament 7 right there. Now on this one, let's rotate this 38 degrees. So click on, on the corner. Set your rotation at 38 degrees. Actually, it should be negative 38. There we go, negative 38 degrees. Let's enlarge this to 250. There we go. And we'll stick that just kind of pointing up to the corner. Not clear to the corner, but pretty close to the corner. Maybe down just a little bit like that. So it's right in there someplace. And then back to our layers again. We'll add some coloration onto this thing now. now. If you want to, I'm just going to copy the layer mask at this point. So I'm seeing just that out there. A little easier to see what's going on. Okay, back down to that layer. And let's go up to the layer menu, new fill layer, gradient once again. Make sure that the that checkbox is checked. Choose OK. Click on our gradients. This one has changed this to our color harmony is one right there. And then we're going to be choosing one that's yellow, magenta, and teal. And then right across here, there we go, yellow, magenta, teal. You want that one right there. Choose OK. And that gives us that coloration into that shape once again. And let's set this angle at 26.5. And choose OK. So there's the coloration. 
Now I'll take that shape, drag it up here to the new layer button, and pull that above that gradient. Now notice that this gradient no longer is linked or clipping this shape down below. So let's just fix that. Over here where the name is, right click and create clipping mask. And that puts it back in again. That just indents it again. Okay, now this is on top. So let's take this and push this up a bit. Right there, so we're above that background one. And I want to add a, another coloration on this. So same thing. Back up to layer, fill layer gradient. Make sure you check that checkbox. Choose OK. And click on the gradients. We're still here. We're going to be using the same gradient still. That's the yellow, magenta, teal. Choose OK. But we're going to be changing the angle here. It's be negative 146.3. little tweak on that one. And choose OK. So you have the orange on the top and then that kind of blue-green down below. So there's our sunburst on the right-hand side. Okay, that finishes off the background shapes. So let's go ahead and bring back in the portrait. Clear up to there. So there's our portrait. And then click on this layer. We'll now put in our foreground shapes. There aren't very many of these, but this adds in just a little bit more interest onto this one. So a new layer right above that layer. There we go. So it's a new layer right below this brick thing and right above that layer. And this would be our foreground shape. We have three foreground shapes, and then we're all done with the project. Okay, come back to our graphics. And let's scroll back up now and find our flower shapes in here. First one's a flower ornament shape. And it's right there. There it is, flower border one. Just click that and bring that in. Now, if you're moving these things, make sure that you're right on top of one of the black areas. Otherwise, you'll grab something else. Be putting this one right down here towards the bottom right-hand corner. Click on the corner of that shape. And let's change the size here to 175%. So 175, that enlarges that. And let's rotate this around. Down here, set this at negative 16. In this position right about there somewhere. So the bottom corner is just about the bottom down there, and that's pretty good. Okay, back to our layers. Now on this one, we'll do something just a little bit different. We're going to add a stroke around this. So let's go up to our layer and layer style, style settings. Come down to stroke. That should be at black already. And then set the size at 8. This will give us an outline around our foreground objects. So no outline on the background objects, but if an outline on the foreground objects. Let's now put our color onto this one. So layer, same thing. Fill layer, gradient, make sure you check that checkbox. Choose OK. Click on the gradient. And we're going to be using the one over here. It's called Spectrum. It's the first one in the Color Harmonies section right there. Choose OK. There's a spectrum, and then set the angle on this one to a negative 17. And choose OK. So the foreground has this nice little outline, black outline around it. OK, next one. We'll put a new layer above this layer, just like that. Come back to our graphics. and. We'll scroll up a little bit further. We're still in our flower section. And we want this one right there. And it's called Flower or Floral Ornament 3. There it is. You can see it's right here. We'll be putting this down in the right hand corner, kind of. We'll come down here for that. Now let's adjust this. Click on the corner. Brings our settings up. Let's set the size to. 140%. Let's rotate this. Come down here and type in 25. So rotation of 25. Choose OK. And let's pull that down just a bit. So it's kind of on top of that paint spot right there. There we go. Back to our layers. Now on this one, we'll be using the same layer style. So you can right click on this right here, this flower layer. 
right click on this one, copy layer style, come up here to the shape 7, right click and paste layer style. And that puts that black border around that for us. And now let's put in our coloration on this one. So same thing, layer, fill layer, gradient. Make sure you check that checkbox. Most of these also don't have anything on the layer masks because they're in front of and not behind the portrait. Okay, click on the gradient in here. And we'll be using the same spectrum gradient right there. Choose OK. And we'll leave this one at the 90 degrees. Let's leave it as is and choose OK. So there we go. There is that flower. And the last one, one more over here, and we're all done. So same trick again. New layer. There it is. Back to our graphics. And the one right below this one, that one right there, it's called Flower 10. And here it is. On Flower 10, there's no rotation, no size change. Just put it right on top of the other flower. So just right down here, bottom right-hand corner, just like that. Back to our layers. And same thing, come down to Layer 7, right-click, Copy Layer Style, back up here to Shape 8, right-click, Paste Layer Style. That gives us our black outline on that one. And let's give this one its gradient. So back up to Layer, come down to Fill Layer, Gradient. Again, choose that clipping mask, choose OK. Click on the gradient right there. Use our spectrum one last time. And we'll leave that at the same 90 degrees. And there we go. That takes care of our foreground flowers. We have our background shapes. We have our paint splots in there. All looks fine. Last thing we need then is just to show these two settings again. There we are. So those are thrown. And there it is. There is our graffiti portrait. Let me just pull this up and zoom in just a little bit here get the full size and there we go so as I said at the beginning of this this big long project not a difficult project to do but a lot of little steps to achieve this look so there it is that's how you can make a graffiti style wall art painting from a photograph thank you for watching my video I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.